Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and you just can't trust atoms. They make up everything. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called The Expanse, a Telltale series, developed by Deck9 and published by Telltale, released not in early access and selling for 25 American dollars. Now, I thought that Telltale games had gone out of business. I don't know, maybe they came back, maybe I was wrong, maybe someone else took over, I don't know, but I've always loved their games, and I'm really hoping that they are back for real. Also, I really loved the show The Expanse. What a show. So, putting those two things together ought to give me quite the experience, right? Well, that's the hope. So let's get into this sucker. I'm excited. But before that, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. This will probably be the only video I put out this week due to family gatherings around turkeys and whatnot. So sorry about that, but I really do enjoy this holiday and spending time with my family and I don't want to miss it. So hope you all out there have a happy holiday as well. Now then, on to the game. You play as Kamina Drummer from the hit TV show The Expanse. If you don't know what that is or haven't watched it yet, then I highly encourage you to do so. It's kind of like Mass Effect, but not quite. It's a really good show regardless, even if you haven't played Mass Effect, so go watch it anyway. But whatever, you play as Kamina Drummer, as she's part of a scavenging crew of belters. Also, if you haven't seen the show, then you won't really understand a lot of what we're going to talk about here today. Sorry about that, but I don't really have time to go into the specifics of the names and descriptors and whatnot. Anyway, while scavenging, you end up finding something super important, like a treasure map, and now you're off to find the treasure. That's pretty much the gist of it. So, uh, yeah, I can't go further into it without spoilers, so that's just going to have to satisfy you for now. So, as always, let's go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts. Alright, so up first for the positives is the soundtrack. The sound effects, the music, and the voice acting, it's all very well done here. First off, that music is amazing. You probably can't hear it right now due to copyright concerns, but it's pulled right out of the TV show, and it's just as mystical and beautiful as it ever was. As for the sound effects, they sound perfectly sci-fi and realistic at the same time, and they aren't overshadowed by anything. The voice acting is also done very well. Everyone is doing a good job, including the lovely Kara G, who reprises her role as the voice actress for Kamina Drummer. It was a surprise, but a pleasant one to hear her voice in the game. Next up for the positives is the graphics and visual effects. The graphics are perfectly in line with previous Telltale games and works very good here. There's good contrast, great color schemes, good lighting, as well as attention to detail. But I think what really stood out to me was the facial animations, the blinking and lip syncing. It all looked really good and was really well done. Then you've got the visuals, the cutscenes, the minor cutscenes scattered about with great camera work, attention in the right places, and I could keep going, but basically the game just looked, it's very nice to look at. The next good thing that I want to talk about here is the gameplay. I was a little bit worried. Basically, the Telltale games are kind of just QTE and dialogue options focused games, but in this one they actually added a lot more to it. Yes, you do have the standard QTE and dialogue options like you'd normally see, but because we're in space, and one of the cool things about the show was the gravity and lack of mechanics, they included that kind of stuff here too. You can actually fly around in space and utilize mag boots and fly around and whatnot whenever you're exploring ships in space. It's a really cool idea that really just makes you feel like you're there. It was fun and interesting exploring these derelict spaceships within the confines of space and lack of gravity. There's also scrap and materials that you need to find, either for your crew for a side quest or just for your ship in general. Not too sure what they do yet, but it's cool that you're not just looking for the main quest objective, but also little things that'll help you later on in the game, along with all the little minute details of things you can find and examine where you'll get to hear her thoughts on whatever it is she's looking at yet, and it's all just very immersive. I haven't gotten too far into the game yet, however, to see, so, you know, what I've seen so far of the part of the gameplay is a lot of fun, and I can't see what else they do with it, however, I don't really know if a lot of those stuff, the things that I'm collecting, are actually going to play a part in the gameplay or in the story at all, because I haven't gotten that far into it. So, I don't know, but I really hope so, I feel like, I hope they wouldn't just give that to us for no reason. The last two things for the positives that I want to talk about is the stability and the price. The stability of the game is pretty good. I personally never noticed any frame rate dropping or clipping. I'm not too sure if the video is working right now or not. I was having some issues with the uh, recording software and with the editing, so hopefully it looks good. I'm not going to know until after I record this script, so, you know, fingers crossed. Anyway, I never noticed anything while I was playing uh, frame rate dropping or clipping. I didn't notice any bugs or crashes or anything, so it's pretty stable and safe to play, in my opinion. And the price tag, also in my opinion, is very much appropriate. I mean, we're talking great visuals, graphics, voice acting, music, gameplay, length, choice, and I could keep going. Plus there's the replay the replayability options and the stability and just overall I think the price tag is just super perfect here. Absolutely no complaints at all from me. Okay, so that's all the good I got to say about the game. Now on to the negatives. But before that, I really need the help of my wonderful viewers out there to help the growth of my channel. I only get more views and get more noticed if people out there actually watch my content. So along with liking the video and subscribing, if you share my video, it really helps get my channel out there and help get me noticed. So if you find my videos even the little bit informative or entertaining, please spread the word and help get my channel more noticed. Thank you.
Now then, on to the negatives. And honestly, I don't really have a whole lot to say here. I'm going to try to stretch out my complaints. Uh, the game is pretty darn good, but since I try not to be biased, and since I always try to be fair with the good and the bad, I have to find something negative to talk about, and this is what I came up with. So, I guess the first thing that I'd point out that I didn't like was the lack of large choices. These games are legendary for their choices, and so far I haven't really had to make any big ones. Like, for instance, there's a scene where you're trying to decide what to do while you're being chased by pirates. No spoilers. It would have been super cool in next gen if the game let you make a choice. Stay and fight, or hide in this nearby debris field. Even if staying and fighting kills you, you get to see a cool cutscene of you fighting them off and then dying before letting you know that, you know, obviously hiding was the right choice. It still would have been cool to have such an option. But you have to follow the story laid out before you and get to make minor choices along the way. Like, keep the leg or keep the loot. Kill this guy or imprison him. I'm sure those will come back into play later, but so far all my choices have felt rather small, and considering the studio behind this game and considering their history, I really wish they'd start taking bigger risks and giving us bigger choices. But this is still an early look at the game, maybe later on they'll have some bigger choices, I hope, but as of right now, it's kind of like, you know, the choices you make, are, they just seem very small and inconsequential. The next negative I want to talk about is the lack of direction. Sure, the game gives you a guide on where to find the main objective, but not side objectives. You know, like for instance, I needed to find no, medicine for a crew that. member, right? But despite me looking in three separate designated med bays, I didn't find a single medicine thing for my crewmate on two different ships. Three different med bays! I mean, come on! I refuse to keep looking for medicine if you're gonna make it this freaking difficult to find it without any guide or any help at all. What's the point? And I'm talking, we're, we're, we're looking in like zero G here, like I'm, I'm, I've got all dimensions to look around, and it's, it's complicated, and it's dark, and it's hard. And the last negative I want to talk about is the controls. Once again, we have another game designed on PC, sold on PC, but optimized for controllers. Ridiculous. Why not have it optimized for both? Why limit yourselves this way? Why punish the players this way? It makes it very hard to move around in zero-g with PC controls, and I shouldn't have to have an Xbox controller to have an easy, fun playthrough of your game. I hate it when companies do this. To me, it makes absolutely no sense. Why not just optimize it for both? Where's the harm? What, would it have taken you an extra month before putting out the game? An extra couple months? I mean, come on. I hate, I hate it when this happens. So, if you're playing with just PC controls, when you're not floating around in space, it's passable. But when you're using zero G and you're exploring different ships and stuff, it can get it can become a headache. It can become a nightmare. And I really hope that an update later on can fix this. All right. So that's all the negatives I got to say about this game. And honestly, I really hated doing that. And I was kind of stretching them a little bit because I was really enjoying this game. I still am. And I honestly can't wait to get back into it and keep playing it. And even those negatives for me, they're mostly passable. They're mostly OK. Like I can just wave them off and continue to enjoy the game because it does everything else right. I mean, sure, okay, if we're talking about the game, I'm not a huge, or about the content, I'm not a huge fan of Kamina Drummer, the character, but I am a huge fan of the show. Now, I wish we could have played as some unknown, unnamed person who's not connected to the stories, but, you know, have the story that you're playing with take place in the same universe, but, you know, whatever, it's still a lot of fun, she's not the worst character you'd be playing as. However, if you haven't seen the show, you're most, you're, you're most likely not going to understand half of what's going on here, or what anything is. It's very clear that this game is for fans of the show, and I think the show is based off books, too, so fans of the books as well. So if you haven't seen The Expanse or read the books, you might want to pass on this game, as you would have no idea who is who, what is what, or why anything is anything. But if you did enjoy The Expanse, then this game is great. It's a lot of fun, it's well written, it's well acted, it's well put together, and honestly, it's just very well designed in my opinion. So, yeah, if you've seen the show, I highly encourage you to check out this game. If not, then go watch the show and then come back and play this game. However, if you go watch the show, just keep in mind, in the first season, like the first three or four episodes are really slow because they're doing a lot of world building and explaining of what you're looking at. But after that, it really takes off and becomes amazing. So keep that in mind and just stick it out through the first few episodes and then the show gets great. All right, everybody? All right. So that's all the time I got for this video today. Thanks so much to everybody who stuck around till the end. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.